Hey, so we are in a, on a severe shortage with our stack slate elements, the spheres, the urns. Right now, in order to pull off Joe's display where he has that stack slate sphere stream, we need to rob that stuff from our retail store. Fortunately for us, we we're gonna go ahead and revamp this area anyways, but because we are in such a shortage in the warehouse, we need to actually steal them from the retail store to incorporate them into Joe's design. So I've got Garrett over here. We're also gonna have Roy up here and then Josh, who's talking with Fred back over there. They're gonna rip apart this display right here and then they're also gonna be adding lights onto the spillway bowl and we're gonna do something really cool and funky over here. So these three spheres are going to come out and then there's another one way over there starting off a very small stream as well. First order of business would just be to protect everything. We're gonna lay down fabric, turn everything off and then go ahead and start dismantling this. At the same time, we'll also probably start running a lot of our lights and really jazzing up this area with some colored lights and creating a much different effect in here. You ready to roll? Yeah, let's do it. All right, bud. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. What is up everybody, Chris from Team Aquascape. It's myself, and of course you know him as the Silver Fox, but Josh Duffy, AKA the Leak Whisperer. He and I are going to be attacking this section back behind me, which you guys have seen in a couple of episodes, us mentioning as part of our retail store renovations. Up here, we are going to be doing a new poundless waterfall, and we're gonna be including one of the basin spillway bowls. That's the big bowl that does not have the snout on it. This one is going to have water coming up over all sides of it, and it will sit right about there. You ready to go, Josh? Ready. Let's go. We're gonna be using moss rock in this area just to kind of switch it up. We have a lot of granite between the little pieces over here, but especially our bullfrog pond over there, as well as some of the pondless waterfalls and even the new ecosystem pond that will go over there will be all out of granite. So I wanted to change things up and just change the motif a little bit and use some of that moss rock, that Tennessee moss rock that you guys have seen in a lot of our episodes. We already have a couple of chunks in there and it marries really, really well with the granite anyways. The reason I wanted to do that is we have a very shallow area along here from the top of the aqua box to the top of this coping stone here. And I don't wanna to get too high above that with some of these foundational rocks down on top of the basin. What we're gonna do is we already have a pump located in our aqua block, which is not advisable for everyday use or in an outdoor setting. So I just wanna make that very, very clear. But we have a 2,000 to 4,000 gallon per hour pump. We've notched the pump cord out that will run that way to our power supply over there. And then we have a series of fittings that makes it as low profile as possible. We do have a a low suction device. You can see it all the way down there. It's attached to our aqua surge pump and that inch and a half line daylights out. This T right here is reducing down to one inch. As you can see, we're gonna run one inch pipe to our bowl and then I have a ball valve directly behind that because the flow of water is going that way and we will put as much back pressure as we need to adjust the flow to the bowl. But we're gonna be using one pump for not only the bowl that's gonna sit here, but also the waterfall that will start up into here. So Josh and I are gonna work on setting the bowl, getting all of this backfilled. The reason, again, like I said, this is not advisable and it's not a very common practice, but we are using bag gravel in through here to help occupy some of that void space because we are gonna build up with all of this. It'll make a little bit more sense later, but we're gonna build all this up with gravel and then do a drop liner over this entire thing in order to get water to travel over top of the aqua blocks. So I'm just occupying this void space here instead of trying to backfill, 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 so on and so forth, because I only have so much liner here that I have to work with. This is the liner that runs from here all the way over. So it's all one cohesive reservoir. So a couple challenges is working inside here inside the retail store, as you guys have seen us do, is there's a lot of people coming and going. Access is always a challenge, but we're also working within the small confines of this space and with what's already been created. I don't want to tear everything apart to create a little pondless waterfall. So we're going to put our thinking caps on and kind of get creative with how we're going to be able to create this waterfall with a minimal amount of work, smallest amount of time, but highest amount of impact. I'm sure it'll make sense as you watch some of the B-roll and as we kind of go through the project, but that's the plan today. Here's what we're doing is we've got the basin spillway bowl. Went ahead and set that at the elevation we wanted. You can see it's about 10, 11 inches above the top of the coping stone. I recessed it down a good six inches. We've got our plumbing attached. We've got our ball valve here. Like I said, it was after the T. This will put back pressure to force water to come up through that one inch pipe that will end up filling up this bowl. And then that inch and a half line snakes inside the bottom liner and is up back underneath somewhere over there 
behind this drop liner. I put a piece of fabric and drop liner over the entire thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and build my waterfalls on top of this liner. It's a very similar idea to when we build our backyard landscape and waterfall kits, where we have that drop liner that's back behind everything that sits on top of the reservoir, and then we build our frame rocks. So picture this as the aqua basin, and then our frame rocks would sit on top, and then the rest of that liner, we just rely on that to hold the water. So picture our maybe an aqua basin here instead, and if you've seen our backyard landscape and waterfall kits, the liner just sits on top of the reservoir, and then we rely on that to build our waterfalls and all the rock work inside. So very, very similar principle because this is just an oversized aqua basin all the way in through here. So you can see we have our bottom liner that encloses our entire reservoir all through here, but I'm gonna go ahead and rather than holding that liner back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, I'm gonna build on top of that liner, which is why I put that fabric down to prevent any of the sand that I'm gonna backfill with underneath the top liner from migrating down into the aqua blocks. So the first order of business is to go ahead and get my bottom stone set and then I'll build my waterfall backfill. I'm thinking I may use this as a partial frame for a little waterfall maybe, but we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to avoid tearing too much into that rock work, so I'm gonna work with what I have. Kids, don't try this at home. what's so fun about doing this inside the retail stores we can really pull off stuff that we've been looking to try or we've done in the field but we want to kind of go up and over the top with a lot of the stuff here inside the store and this small little pondless waterfall is no exception we have the basin the spillway bowl basin down in the bottom but then what I wanted to do it just was kind of underwhelming to me and it didn't look as cohesive as I wanted it to with the rest of what was fitting in over here with the spillway bowl collection so I think we're gonna try and and start the waterfall off with another spillway bowl, the actual one with the snout where the water comes out. And that's what we're working on right now. So it's back and forth, back and forth, making sure it looks right. The hardest part about this is getting the plumbing to the bottom of the bowl and not sacrificing volume from the waterfall. So what I mean by that is that bowl can only really take about 1500 gallons through that little snout because of the width without it starting to back up over the back of the bowl or it just looks too aggressive. We've got a 2000 to 4000 gallon per hour pump here and I really want to max that out because of the style of waterfall that I built. I want this deep, bassy, babbly brook kind of look and I want to still have the waterfall feel impressive and have the volume that I want and I don't think 1500 gallons, even with the style of falls that we built, is going to be enough to really pull that off. So what I'm going to need to do is in that upper area is manifold all of that plumbing and have some shoot out through a ball valve and then some of it go into the bowl so that we are still getting 25 to 100 to 3,000 gallons up through that upper pool, even more if necessary, but only putting about 1,500 to the to the spillway bowl. So that gives me about another 1,500 gallons that I also want in that upper pool to hit that top waterfall. So once we get it running, I will explain that a little bit more in depth and I'll make sure to keep the plumbing exposed when we have everything running to really show you what that means. So we caught her in frame and she's just standing there like a creep. This is Danielle, she's in local market. Say hi, Danielle. So, sorry about that, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> so anyways, we're still here in the office filming. I think we're about the only ones comfortable on camera. Everybody else in the office did not sign up for this, so maybe that would be why she was, had the look on her face that she did. But anyways, so we're really close to finish, finishing up. Don't know if we'll get it all totally done today, but we're gonna give it the old college try like we always do, and uh, it's turning out fantastic. So, all right, back at it. Just got called masterful. I know. Really? We did. See that? If we can make the retail associates and manager happy, then I think we did a good job. Yeah, I think I think we nailed it. It looks good, right? Yeah. Should we let our viewers see? Yeah. They've waited long enough. So Jack's over here admiring the work, but we are done, 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 da da dun with our little pondless waterfall we did.
think what's so cool about this is that it literally is about 11 rocks total, including some of the wing wall rocks over here. But what's even cooler about it is the incorporation of the spillway basin bowl, which is that big bowl where water comes up over all sides. But then of course we also added a spillway bowl, which you saw over here. So we wanted to kind of mimic that without necessarily doing this. This is a standalone feature. It looks way more like a true fountainscape, but we wanted to incorporate those into a pondless waterfall. It's a very simple pondless waterfall. You can see the top spillway bowl dumps into that upper pool, then a little pitcher style falls. And then of course we have this little bird loving rock right here. That's also a frame rock. You can see how that water crests on top of that rock, but then comes down in through here, then twists and turns its way and then disappears into the reservoir. But I love kind of the low profile and the simplicity of it. It's just a very minimalistic approach to building water features. Turned out great. It's going to, I think, sell a lot of smaller projects here out of the retail store. This is, again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11 rocks, which is probably just over a ton of rock and gravel. And then, you, of course, you've got the two bowls, but I think just the scale of this project will sell other projects and more work out of the retail store for projects of this size. Really fits into this space. I love that when, as you're walking in through the store and you kind of go where Jack is, you see all five bowls at different angles, different heights, but it just really nestles into the backside of the existing pond. You even see the six the bowl back over there just sneaking out the one that's dumping into the bullfrog pond but just a simple little waterfall they're not nice it's low profile fits the it's to scale with the rest of the environment over here on this side of the store and then it matches up really really well with these so love it nice job jack and this is just a very, very manageable project for a homeowner to visualize in their backyard. It's not grandiose, it's not over the top, but it's still beautiful in its own right. And it's got a great sound, direction, all that stuff. So just turned out incredible. A few head scratching moments because we're building inside of our retail store on top of that existing liner, but we worked our way through it, set it up very much like a flower and garden show. So we would definitely install this a little bit differently out in the field, but given the palette that we were working with, this is what came out of it. it turned out truly spectacular. So. Thanks again for watching. Have any questions? Let us know in the comment section below and we'll be sure to get back to you. See you next time. Bye.